Hey everybody, great to see you. Um, we'll start in a minute or so, give people another minute to, there are other people coming in to, to get started. Okay, well, look, let's get started. Um, welcome to everybody. My name is uh, Bill Cope. I um, have been involved with this conference since it began, since it began a number of years ago, a little bit of introduction about myself. I work at the University of Illinois, um, and that's where Common Ground is based. We're based in the research park at the university here. Um, I'm in Illinois at the moment. I'm not at, actually at the conference. Um, so I'm just hosting this this online uh, this online session for today, um, and let me tell you I'll tell you um, how many people we have here. I've got the numbers in front of me. So we have um, about um, sixty people who are on on uh, in person at the conference in in Spain at the moment. Um, sixty English speaking speakers that is. I'm just going back to my stats here. Um, we have about 40 online, so there's about 100 in the English group, English language group, and Spanish, we have 21 in person and 33 online, about 50 people. So about 150 people in all. Um, and what we always find is that um, a small number of people like coming to these synchronous sessions, so for them, we hold them. But nearly all of the conferences are asynchronous. Um, uh, so in fact, there are, again, I'll look at my statistics, there are over 125 pieces of digital media. So there's a yeah, relatively small conference, but it's a conference where we very much encourage everyone to participate. So, so welcome from, from me. Um, a little description of um, this session, um, and that is um, I'm going to give a bit of an overview of the conference first, um, uh, and I'm going to um, speak a little bit about the conference format but only in a kind of an introductory kind of way, because later on in the session, um, one of the other members of the Common Ground team, Tamsin Gilbert, is going to take you through how the um, uh, the event uh, app within CG Scholar works, um, a kind of a little introduction to that. But look, firstly, and then, by the way, in the middle of that, between before she does that, I'm going to get you folks to introduce yourself briefly and perhaps um, talk a little bit about the session if, if you're presenting, talk a little bit about what you're presenting just for you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds or something, just so we get a bit of a flavour of who's in the group. So firstly, about the conference, let me um, share my screen for a second because I can bring up the themes that way. So uh, screen sharing is disabled. Um, I'll put a message through. Sorry, Sorry, Bill, I made you a co-host. Oh, you've just made me a co-host? Okay, great. Sorry. Um, I was just writing you a message to <laughs> get you to do that, Tamsin. That's Tamsin Gilbert, by the way. So, um, and here we go here. So this is this year's conference. Um, it's the 14th time we've run this conference. It's been a while now. Um, and, um, and this is the role of images uh, in making the world, not just picturing the world, but making the world and the transformative power of images. I mean, I think one of the messages is since, particularly since the rise of new media, digital media, um, images have become a larger, larger part of our lives and a larger, larger part of our communicational infrastructures. So before language was a priority, you know, it was reading and writing, perhaps it was some speech in radio and telephone, but um, the media kind of pushed us in the direction of language. But increasingly now, the new media where image making is so accessible and immediate, um, it's become a more important part of our lives. So, you know, what is that part of our lives that it's become? That's the main theme of the conference. So, um, as I say, this is very much a, um, uh, a mixture of people who are 
in person at the conference and, and presenting online. And we very much encourage the people who are presenting in person uh, to upload their digital media for two reasons. Um, one is that makes it accessible to the online people, but also it's a record of what happened at the conference, a uh, lasting record. But, but um, this, the discussion space gives more space for interaction as possible in the, the few short minutes at the end of a session. So, um, you know, the, it was COVID that, that really forced us to go in this direction to create this blended conference model, but there are some lasting benefits in the terms of this um, uh, virtual create as well. As I said, nearly all of the sessions are uh, asynchronous in the sense that um, you know you go to the session at your leisure. And one plea we make, and I'm going to make it several times to the point of being um, uh, a bit of a bore, <laughs> is never leave a page, never leave a virtual session without leaving a comment. Um, um, if nobody there at the same time as you, these are not synchronous discussions. It triggers an email which will bring the other person back to the asynchronous discussion. So please, um, you know, make that a rule that, um, that you, you know, you, that you um, view the session, but also leave a comment before you before you move on. The other um, important aspect of what we do is that we are building a, a body of peer reviewed knowledge in this area. Um, and we do that through a formal journal publication process and a book publication process, um, too, for that matter. So this um, is um, the site where we publish that material. As you can see, there have already been um, 410 publications in this area. It really is just an incredible resource in this cross-disciplinary, but still very specialised area about the nature of the image. You know, the, one of the interesting things is people bring so many different perspectives to this question, um, and it can really only be dealt with in a cross-disciplinary way, even though it's a very itself a very specialised theme. Important aspect of this page is the advanced search. So yes, you might not want to read 410 papers because if I go scrolling down here, you'll find all 410 of them. Uh, but the advanced search means you can narrow it down to particular topics um, as well. Use that resource. And one of the way, one of the things we do in academe is we honour each other's presence. We honour what we've learned from each other uh, by citing that work. That's a very important thing to do. So please use this body of work and and and, and cite it. Um, so um, and I'll also mention very briefly before we start doing the introductions uh, that. Um, next year, the conference is going to be in Buenos Aires. Um, uh, please, and Buenos Aires is a, a pretty fantastic town for all matters of uh, arts and culture. So um, to uh, make the journey to Buenos Aires for those who are in North America and Europe and Australia and Asia, it's a long journey, um, but it's, a, well, an absolutely worthwhile one. Uh, but if you can't, of course, we'll have the online conference again. So they're my main sort of introductory um, messages. And, and by the way, next year we're dealing with this all-important question of artificial intelligence. Now that we've got these um, uh, generative AI tools which can create images um, from prompts, um, it's a it's a, a game changer, a world, a problematic and important and significant and all uh, good and bad, uh, full of risks and opportunities. It's a big it's a big change that's happening at the moment. So that's what we're going to focus on as our main theme for next year. But of course, all the other general themes will continue. But this is a specialist theme that we're going to add to the the the, uh, the other themes. Um, Tamsin, quickly, uh, in terms of introductions, have I forgot any other things you'd like to mention? No, nothing at this stage. I'll run through the microsite um, in a little bit, but I think that's it. So, look, I'd like to just go around the room um, uh, and get people to introduce themselves. And as I do, um, Tamsin will, if you're presenting, she'll find your presentation and, um, and find Pedro, Pedro Moto. Are you able to... Um, are you able to... Um, uh, Introduce yourself and say hello, Pedro. And by the way, if you can't, um, just put a message in the chat because you may be in a noisy Starbucks or you may be a Spanish speaker who doesn't <laughs> feel comfortable speaking English or um, or whatever. Um, uh, are you there, Pedro? 
Uh, okay. Uh, no, Pedro, um, no worries. Um, the next person that I'm going to go to then, Pedro, we can come back to you if you manage to uh, hear us and come back online. Um, is Laura, Laura France, how are you? Hi, I'm obviously in a place where I can speak. <laughs> um, I am an online presenter. I had intended to be in person, but you know, family things happen and so I couldn't make it. But my presentation is on, um, uh, I didn't expect this, I, I apologize. Um, it is on uh, the history of uh, racism and racialization in photography. And um, looking back at that to sort of explain uh, a problem with a Dove ad that occurred in 2017 um, that Dove needed to pull and um, they apologized for it and said, we're sorry we missed the mark. And uh, so my presentation is actually called We Missed the Mark. And uh, it sort of unpacks through some formal analysis what um, happened in the ad and then gives some um, historical examples to show how we sort of came to this point and then also some suggestions for moving forward. Okay, great. And there's the um, uh, there's the link to that uh, presentation, folks. So uh, wonderful to have you here. And I can see there have been 67 people been to your page already, which is great. So um, uh, that's, and look, Obviously, these are uh, life and death critical issues at the moment in terms of, um, you know, the imagery of race and the image of imageries of diversity, which have, um, you know, so much of those uh, those issues these days are actually refracted through imagery. You know, if we think of um, the, these questions, images spring to mind, and images in a media sense um, are very, very powerful. Well, thank you very much. For, for that, and I'm sorry I kind of sprung it on you, but um, <laughs> it gave us a good, it's welcome and it's great to hear your voice and, and great to have you here as well. So the next one that I have is Greg Leach. Are you there, Greg? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. No, oh, there you are. Hi there. In the yes. image as well as a name. Well as a name. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay right uh yeah you caught me slightly on the hop as well but uh well my uh my paper derives from uh my phd that is uh coming to a close actually uh later this year uh it's called photographs their evidential power beyond content how archive photographs re-enter our lives in meaningful ways so essentially uh this research is about photography and subjectivity. Uh, so I'm trying to explore a kind of meta-theoretical approach to how we react and respond to photographs um, in an attempt to move away from the sort of heavyweight theor theorization of it. Um, and the young example that uh, I'm going to talk about that I've um, included as the presentation here is based on an experience of my own uh based on some photographs that i inherited from my father in 2017 and uh some rather unexpected things happened as a, as a result of me seeing these images so um i'm going to leave that there as a teaser for you to go and see the presentation if you if you fancy it Okay, okay, you're not gonna, there are gonna be no spoilers. Um, so that's good. We'll, we'll, we'll be there to find out what the truth is. So, if you know what they say, an image never lies. So, there's some truth out there that we don't know about yet. So, wonderful. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, you know, this, this whole point about, um, you know, the past re enters our lives through imagery. I, I really like that. That's a, that's a great, um, that's a great kind of way. Of, Metaphor, if you like, it's more than a metaphor. I think it's a great way to think about it. So, welcome and great to have you here from from Manchester. Okay, the next one that I have uh, going through my thing is um, Goncha Garcia Gonzalez. She's put a message in there that she's in a bus, 
which is that's the great thing about you know online virtual conferences you can access them from a bus as well so yes water systems one point generally again really important which is you know what are the interfaces of engineering and technology and science with imagery um and they've become so 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 very important these days um and there's a whole kind of universe of how you um how you connect those things in order to represent uh, the empirical world, but also in the case of environments, then just the empirical world, it's a world full of <laughs> agendas of all kinds, um, development agendas and environment, you know, um, environmental agendas and so on. So very, very important. Okay, I'm moving to the next one now, um, which is um, uh, Ambrogia Sereda. Are you able to... Um, are uh, you able to speak? I'm able to speak. I'm not sure. Okay, you can also see me because I've been experiencing some troubles with my camera these days. So I was not sure you could see uh -huh. me. I'm glad to be part of this interesting conference. I'll be speaking about the triangulation between uh, gender identity and fashion images. I've carried out a research for some years now about the uh, a listing of emotions in this triangulation. So I'll focus mainly on that aspect, uh, how images uh, work on our identity also by making us feel somehow in a certain uh, relation to our body and to the world around us. Okay, that's great. Now, thank you for that. And obviously, um, you know, the role of imaging in advertising, the role of imaging in gender identities, it just... You know, there are so many uh, layers of this fashion business. So thanks very much for helping us to uh, unpack that and coming to us from Milan, Italy. So um, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, and, and again, again um, uh, you know, I, I hope that you find it a, a fruitful experience. 71 engagements on that page already, which is marvellous. Then the next one I have is from uh, HL... I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly, uh, and um, from the um, from Ankara in Turkey. Uh, if you're unable to speak, just do just indicate to us in the chat that that's the case. Um, and but if you, we don't hear from you, we'll take that as you're unable to speak. But any. Uh, um, the conference as well. Okay, I'm moving on now to the next one, uh, the next person um, who is uh, uh, Gregorio de, Gre de Gregoris, who is from um, Italy as well. Um, hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. Great. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, my uh, presentation is about uh, uh, cognitive image of sound, um, in where sound includes um, also voice uh, and musical sound. And it starts from protohistoric uh, uh, rock paintings, which were already uh, symbolic, uh, not uh, um, figurative. And um, and then there's some uh, other sources about uh, the concept of rhythm proposed by a Bambinist, where rhythm is uh, no longer related to, is not not, not related to um, measure and style, but to, to space and how things displays in, in space. So it's quite abstract. And, and then uh, um, I started gestural theory and how because gastro theory originated from perception of sound and then it was extended to other domains. And then a proposal about um, on the perception of musical sound by another Italian uh, author who, who is a uh, Marchetta. Um, almost is about uh, um, how symbolization occurs in our mind to figure out things that we are not concrete and are not uh, very well grasped and are uh, still in the um in the phase of uh, um interpretation 
Uh, and then that's it. Uh, there's only a um, PDF presentation. Uh, I tried to uh, and access the to um, a video to I wanted to charge a video even if, if it's not ready now because I'm I'm sick and I uh, did not manage to prepare it. But if I'm in time, I could uh, upload uh, a video um, in in order that uh, um, peers and other colleagues can. Uh, um access it um, and thank you for this opportunity and to accept my proposal and i'm very glad and honored to be part of this wonderful uh, conference <laughs> thank you very much absolutely fascinating yeah i mean one of um, my research interests is this question of multimodality which is how meanings kind of transpose across one form to another so um how absolutely fascinating because what you've got here and this is my putting my gloss on it is you know you've got these macro notions of ways of flow i'm just looking at the thing and, and configurations which are wow. A, wow. a way to try it. so fascinating and thank you very much for being here and, and contributing that um kind of that perspective um i have a message oh no we've all seen the message actually in the chat from um uh uh, from Stephanie Bender. I don't know whether you're still there, Stephanie. If you are, you can jump in. I'm here. Hi. Oh, great. Yeah, great, 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 great. Let's, uh, let's see it's, it's, briefly before you run off to class. They can be a little, I can be a little late. <laughs> um, I'm so glad I was able to pop in here between my lectures. Um, I have a, I'm sorry. It's like in the middle of mid morning here in Florida. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to, to share this. Um, I'm a little nervous about um, my, my video recording. I, I just took me far too long. I was far too critical. So who knows how well that turned out, but I did uh, provide a PDF as well. Um, and this is an excerpt from my dissertation. Um, so the identity construction in the lens of, of class and specifically Siegfried Krakauer's um, critical theory is what guides this investigation. And so, yeah, these just focus on specific photographs from August Sanders' collection of the new woman slash Anga Shelton. And I, I, I talk about this kind of differentiation between the two within his work as suggested by this visual rhetoric. And it's just an exciting stuff and I'm excited to share it. And what a, what a cool concept for a, a um, conference. I love all the different topics and everything just sounds so fascinating. I'm happy to be a part of it. Yes, and look, let me make a general point as well, is that you're talking about something very, very, very specific, a particular yeah. um, a particular moment in time and a particular person. But, you know, what's interesting um, with this and so many other papers is it brings up issues of such profound general importance. So one of the things I'm going to advise everybody in the conference, actually, and I always do this, is go to unlikely sessions, which seem to be way away from your universe, because you're likely to find uh, transferable concepts there. You're likely to find ideas which you can, um, you know, sparks of ideas which are relevant to you as well. So, um, you know, earlier I showed everyone the advanced search where you can find exactly what you're uh, interested in, but also do the opposite. In the conference, go to some other sessions which are different um, and, and see what people are saying. And you might be surprised actually by the... Um, by these kind of tangential or horizontal connections between um, one piece of work and another. So great. I'm glad we managed to catch you before you went to the, the, the class there, Stephanie. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang out for a few more minutes and, and just mute okay. myself again. So thank you. Great. Now, have I missed anybody? Because some more people have come in. Is anybody else who'd like to introduce themselves and say where they come from? I think um, uh, whether you're presenting or not, by the way, um, uh, oh, Rosalie, there you go. There you go. There you go. I missed you. That's the thing about these shifting Zoom tiles. So um, um, if we, yeah. um, Tamsin, if you can find. So, yeah, uh, Rosalie, over to you. Yeah, Rosalie, over to you. Yeah. My name is Rosalie Fisher. I did come in a couple minutes late, so that might have thrown things off. <laughs> um, but I'm based at Arizona State University. And my um, research is about image making in film and how film is largely an educating medium that trains 
us to behave certain ways, um, particularly in in American culture with with movies, but I know that it, it reaches globally as well. And so um, I was interested in kind of um, the conference theme of the images do not represent us, they create us, and thinking about these archetypes that we face in uh, and, and are kind of trained to emulate um, in a lot of our movies. Um, if it helps, yeah, I was gonna say, I can give you the title. So it's Film and Emotional Contagion. <clears throat> and um, and so I wanted to do a study about audiencing and witnessing and, and then performing compassion. And uh, but, so I, I created a documentary film based on a real life situation that is not very well known. It's not talked about. We hear a lot about school shootings and mass shootings, particularly in American culture. And uh, and we hear a lot of bad things, but we never hear about successful moments where a shooter is talked out of it. And this particular moment um, uh, happened where a shooter was talked out of it, didn't kill anyone. And so I wanted to create a documentary film about that and and kind of um, turn that hero archetype on its head. Uh, we have this idea of what is a strong masculine hero, um, but what would it look like if it's more like the mother archetype, compassionate, caring, loving. And, um, and so that's what this is exploring. And I hosted a series of dialogues around the film to, um, to find out how people were impacted by it, and they were. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. Oh, great! That's that's really nice, actually. So again, this is you know, let me gloss on it. It's kind of the um, the connection between image and emotion, if you like. You know, in other words, you know, and to regard these things as separate, um, and to regard it as a kind of a communicative thing. It's actually a I see you use the word empathy a number of times. It's a shared, shared kind of empathetic experience as well. So that's yeah. really important. That's a really important set of concepts. Again, uh, hugely transferable into other contexts as well. So that's mm -hmm. great. Thank you very much for that. Um, now, again, is there anybody else um, who we who I've missed here who'd like to introduce themselves? Oh, uh, Jan McBriarty. Yeah, I'm glad you put up your hand. Wonderful. Um, I don't, I can't hear you. I, we've got an audio problem. Is your audio working? Yeah. Oh, it's working now. It's great. Yeah, I had to unmute. Um, well, my name is Janine McBrady, and I'm a retired teacher. And I have always been interested, obviously, in, in film. And Rosalie, I was extremely interested in what you were talking about about film because that's what my presentation is about. I've I've started the study of noir. I watched it since I was a kid and since I'm a little bit older, um, I've seen a lot um, the transformation of, of film and I, I've always been interested in it. So I look into the components of noir as opposed to um, what people usually think of as noir film. And my paper is basically about what makes the film noir. And I've read so many books about it and they all say the same thing, right? It all evolved from German expressionism and it has, you know, the camera angles and the black and white and, you know, claustrophobia and values. And I thought, you know, there's something what else is there about a film that makes it a noir film? So I took the classical years of, uh, and of course, noir is a French term that was applied in the 50s about the films made in the 40s. And I thought, well, that's very odd. What, what, why did that happen and how did it happen? And I wanted to look at the qualities of film that, that make it a noir film over and above the standard components. And what I found out, at, at least so far, is that it's the content 
of the film, not just the, the making, the components of making the film. And that's what my presentation is about. What do films have to have to qualify as actual noir films? And um, I'll leave it at that. I, I'm not quite sure um, what I'm going to do in terms of the presentation because I have added material that I wanted to read that I didn't add to the um, the physical or the pictures that I sent. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that because I have these wonderful quotes <laughs> and they're on in the paper. So um, I'll have to work on that. Okay, great. And, and by the way, this is a very much an open ended process. So when you get to the paper, you can <laughs> you can sort of work on it further. So that's great. Right, of, right. Yeah. So kind of we're happy to be um, participants in your work in progress. So wonderful. All right. Well, look, thank you, everybody. I think uh, uh, if someone you call out if I've missed you, but I think we've gone around to, to everyone who's able to speak now. And look, what a great collection of things. I can see all sorts of cross-cutting themes, even though the specific subject matter from session to session, presentation to presentation is just so different. So um, again, thank you all for being here. And again, I'm going to boringly say again, don't leave one of the pages without leaving a comment and it will trigger an email to, to the other uh, participants. So um, even if they're not there at that moment, uh, they'll have the opportunity to come back. So look, great to um, hear from you all and to see what you're doing. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Tams and Gilbert, who um, for those who are not familiar with the platform already, some of you may be familiar, she'll walk you through the platform. And there is a recording, the platform has a lot of moving parts. Um, so when she work, walks you through the platform, you can always come back to this recording and there's something you want to remember the, um, about one of these sessions or uh, the conference or um, or something that she says. All right, I am going to hand over to you now, Tamsin. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. You'll have to bear with me for just one moment while I do that. Um, I'm hoping that you can see my screen now. Can someone give me a thumbs up? <laughs> okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so there's many different ways to get to the CG Scholar microsite to engage with the conference and the event schedule. Um, one of these ways is to just go to CG Scholar dot com um, make sure you're logged in in the top right hand corner of the page um, if you're not there'll be a you know you'll be able to log in right there uh, on the right hand side um, if at any point you're not logged in you won't be able to see the full event schedule um, so please make sure that you can always see your name in the top right hand corner of the page another way to get there um, to the microsite is here on the image.com you can click on cg scholar event microsite there um, and again you can see my name there in the top right that's how you know that you're logged in and you're able to see everything that's there um, one thing I do want to highlight before we get started going through this page um, it might be easier to go there from here is to just update your profile whenever your name is listed in the event schedule or listed um, yeah, listed in the event schedule, it's hyperlinked. It goes to your profile page. Um, so one way to do to update that, sorry, I'm in the conference room. I'm struggling with some slow internet today, um, is to update it here um, in your profile under your account settings, which you can get to this way, um, just under your name and account settings, or you can go ahead and click on community there and it will take you to this page as well. Um, people will see this page when they click on your name. Um, they will also be able to add you as a peer. Um, and so you can communicate that way. Um, so I just recommend that you update that information. Um, let me know if you have any trouble. I should have put, I usually uh, put my name in the chat uh, as we start, but I'll do uh, my name and my email address in the chat. Um, so if you have any questions, after we hang up today, uh, you can go ahead and send me a message and that's easy to help out with that. Um, so yes, do update your profile information. Uh, it, everyone will be sent there if they click on your name. Um, so from here, this is the about page um, of the Scholar microsite for the conference. We do have this e-program and user guide. A lot of this is uh, 
information about the conference itself, the history, as well as the plenary speakers, a little welcome letter, a bit about our amazing emerging scholars. Um, but what we do have at the end is a user guide. Um, sorry, I'm going to scroll through this a little bit quickly. Uh, is this user guide? This is much of what I'm saying today is listed in this user guide. Um, so if for some reason you need to just revise, uh, what I'm saying, I tend to talk a little quickly. Maybe you can't access the video right away. Uh, you can go ahead and download that as a PDF and take a look uh, to help you out with anything that you might need. Um, we have some other information here just on the annual themes and special focus, as well as the journal and the book imprint. Um, so you can go ahead and click on those links if you want to read more about that. Now, if you are presenting at the conference, whether you're in person or online only, this will not say submit a proposal. It will say your proposal. Um, I'm not presenting at the conference, which is why mine's being ask, asking me to submit. But when you go ahead and click on your proposal there, you'll see your title, keywords, abstract, the status of your proposal. And then right at the bottom of the page is where you can upload your digital media. Um, in-person delegates, we ask you that even if you're, you're attending in-person to upload digital media, online only delegates, we ask that you, this is, you have to upload digital media. This is the white method of asynchronous presentation at the conference. We ask the in-person delegates um, to upload their digital media because it creates a richer experience for everyone. There might be an online uh, person who views your presentation who has some fantastic questions that they might not ask if you hadn't uploaded your digital media. Uh, so we're trying to make it sort of a richer experience for all. So that's where you will upload it. Now, please note that we do have a review process for information for your uploading your digital media. It won't be visible right away. Just in case you upload a water bill or something like that, we wanna make sure that it's all the right things related to your uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, just give us, you know, we're at, during the conference, we're constantly reviewing to make sure it's up to date as quickly as possible, but just, you know, it won't appear right away. When it is accepted, you'll receive an email saying that the digital media has been accepted. If there's a problem with it, you'll also receive an email saying you've accidentally uploaded a water bill. Um, so uh, that, that, it, that you'll get an email no matter what. Your registration is just information about your registration. Once again, yours might look different to mine, um, but this is also where you can download a receipt um, and any information for things that you've signed up for, which might be useful if you need to get reimbursed from your university or anything like that. I'm going to skip this presentations tab for just one moment, just to highlight the special events tab. Um, we have a number of different online special events. This is one of them. Um, we also have the online talking circle, which will be on Friday. Um, it's a really nice sort of informal session where we can talk about uh, the sessions that we've seen online throughout the last couple of days um, and bring sort of those ideas to the table just to think about how they're related to the special focus and, and some questions moving forward. Um, if you're in uh, Spain, and you want to sign up for the conference dinner, you can do that here. Um, and so that's exactly what it sounds like. It's where you would sign up for special events. Presentations. Um, this is um, a number of ways that we can uh, look at this presentations tab. First of all, you're able to follow presentations. This following tab will be unique to you. If you decide to follow presentations that are only related to uh, film, then they, you can click, uh, I'll show you how to do it in just one moment. You can click the follow button next to those and they will be here. So it means that when you click on this presentations tab, it's easy access for you to get back to those presentations. Uh, so you can view them again and again or see if anyone's commented in the discussion boards there. Featured presentations. Our featured presentations are our wonderful Emerging Scholar presentations. Uh, we have a great Emerging Scholar program You'll see them in person in the rooms as well as in the discussion boards. Um, we like to encourage our uh, PhD students, uh, graduate students and early career scholars um, in, our, in this field. Um, so yeah, go ahead and view their presentations. Um, just to quickly show you, like I mentioned before, I'll use you as an example, Rosalie. We can go ahead and click on her name there. Um, and it will open up in a different tab with her profile. Sorry, I apologize. I am struggling with this slow internet. So there, Rosalie's done the right thing and updated her 
her profile there, I can go ahead and click this button to add Rosalie as a peer. And now for another example is if I'm interested in Rosalie's presentation, I can go ahead and click on the title of her presentation um, and it will open in another tab there. And you can read the full abstract, see the keywords, and you should be able to see uh, the digital media at the bottom of that page. I apologize for this. Uh, there we go. Uh, there we go. So we can see that that's a PowerPoint presentation. I can go ahead and click on that and it will download uh, to wherever you have your downloads set to. So you can go ahead and, and view that. Um, if I want to follow this presentation, I can go ahead and click follow there. And then you can see when I click on the tab again, uh, that that will be listed under my following uh, tab by theme. Uh, say, for example, you're only interested in the special focus. You only want to see presentations related to the special focus. Uh, we have them listed by the themes here. Uh, so this is all those related to the special focus. Um, and then I can scroll down. This is all the presentations rel related to the image and society um, and so on. Um, by type. Uh, if I only want to see workshops, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to look at all the workshop presentations so we can see all the workshops are listed here, all the poster presentations are listed. So if, for example, you only want to see the posters, you can go ahead and just scroll down to them here. Alphabetical is alphabetical according to the title of the presentation. If you remember what the title of the presentation is, but you don't remember who was presenting it or when it was, uh, you can go ahead uh, and take a look there. Um, and then we do have a search function. So if, for example, I'm looking for Lisa's presentation, who I know she is presenting here at the conference, I can go ahead and search her name here. Um, and then it will tell me the title of the presentation, the uh, presenters and the room and date that they are presenting. Now let's move over to the event schedule and we'll get a little bit more into the details of how to engage in the conference. One thing I do wanna note is that we do run this conference in Spanish as well as English. If you want to simply move over to see the Spanish presentations, you can do that with this tab here. You can go ahead and click there. And as you can see, all our presentations, all the Spanish language presentations are listed there. Um, Janine, did you have a question? Yeah, I yeah. did. Um, um, when you say the online presentations, yes, do we actually appear on the screen and make the presentation, or is it just what we've uploaded? It's asynchronous. No. It's just so your online the for, the format of the online pre presentations is asynchronous, meaning it relies on the digital media as the form of presentation. We do have a discussion board linked to every single oh, panel. See. Okay. Um, you, we have, we do this for a number of different reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that we have a large international group of delegates. There is no ultimate time zone that we can get everyone on Zoom at the same time. Um, right. We are favoring theming the sessions in 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 favor of it in favor of a time zone to have a richer discussion. I see. Okay. So um, how, how do you ha you you do all your discussion through? email or or no i'll show you how to do it just give me two oh, okay, seconds okay. i'm getting it i'm getting I'm anticipating. it okay um, actually you. so i'll just show you the online only tab first which might clear things up a bit so say okay. if you're in the online only tab this is for all our online only presenters we can see we have two moderators of this session and four um presentations in this session under the under the panel emerging identities now if i'm interested in this session i can go ahead and click on the title there and it will show me all the different, uh, the abstracts for each one of the different uh, presentations there. Now you can see that some of them have this view digital media box next to them, whereas some don't. So we know that Lucy, Lucia has uploaded her digital media. So we can go ahead and click on that button there or on the title of the presentation, and we can watch this digital media here. Now, it's important to note that the discussion board is associated with the panel, not with the individual presentation. So you'll remember that we went and we saw all these four presentations here. Well, the discussion board is that panel. We're, we're theme, we theme the papers together for a reason, and we want you to look at the connections or maybe not, or maybe the sort of contestation between these ideas that we have in this panel. Um, so one thing to note is that we can see here that this person does has not uploaded digital media yet. 
what we can do is click on the title of that presentation, which will take me to the presenter page like it does when we click the title of any presentation. And there is a request digital media button at the bottom of that page. Um, so I can go ahead and request Dean's digital media by clicking that link there. Um, and what will happen as well is you'll then be following the presentation of the digital media you can you have requested. You, if you don't want to follow that one, that's fine. You can just go ahead and click that unfollow button that's right there next to the title. Now, a few things to note. If you are a presenter in this panel, if there is a comment in the discussion board, you will receive an email saying there is a comment in the discussion board. If you write a comment in the discussion board and someone responds to you, you will receive an email saying someone has responded to you in the discussion board um, with a link back here so you don't get lost. Um, so these are sort of important things to note uh, that we do sort of try and remind you. The emerging scholars will be in there in the next you know, couple of days asking questions, viewing digital media as well. Um, and so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but you can go ahead and do that. Laura, did you have a question? Yes. yes. Uh, it, so the join the discussion at the bottom of a single person's presentation. Takes you that, to, sorry, I got Laura. I does that also go to the panel discussion or yes. are those two separate things? It goes, there's no individual discussion boards for individual presentations. They all go to the panel discussion. That's good to know because uh, that way I know that if I make a comment or when I make a comment, because one should always make a comment before leaving the page, I'll make sure I put the presenter's name or something in there. Yeah, so, so you can. That, that's about. actually a good note. So you could say, uh, James, uh, you could, you know, you could write James, you know, and then ask the question there or or awesome. to the to the to whoever the person is. Yep, that's a really helpful point. Thank Thanks. you. Um, I'll just go back to the schedule for one moment. Um, so like the online only sessions, the in-person parallel sessions, you can also do the same thing. So we'll click on this, even though all these people are presenting in person, they we've asked them to upload digital media. So we can see under this panel, social elements, that we can look at Samuel's work here, um, scroll down and see that Samuel has uploaded an MP4 file that we can watch in a tab when it opens up. And then we can join the discussion board for that panel, social elements here, and ask a question as well. Um, so you're not, if you're an online only delegate, you're not limited to that online only tab. You can view um, other parallel sessions, digital media, you can comment in the discussion board. In addition, we do have a number of online sessions uh, that you can engage in. First of all, we have the online uh, on the image pop-up exhibition. Uh, I don't know how many conferences you've been to, but this one has an exhibition associated with it. Every year we have an exhibition related to the special focus, exhibiting the work of our uh, of the scholars and delegates who are attending the conference. Sometimes they're presenting a paper as well as their artwork. Um, so we encourage you people every year to submit. Um, we do have an online element to this, so you can go ahead and click on that title there um, and click here to access the online exhibition. If you have any questions for the artists, you can go ahead and ask that in the discussion board that's associated with it right there. Um, so we do encourage you to do that. So there's an, uh, the other thing is we do upload these sessions uh, to as digital media following the session itself. So we're in the online welcome session and training, uh, wel online welcome and training session now. The video of this session will appear here for anyone who wasn't at whom might be in Australia and unable to make it at this point, uh, they can join, ask a question in the discussion board as well. We do have an online only workshop after this. The link for that, if you click on the title, is available in that uh, there. It will also be recorded, like we said, and available as digital media following the session there if you, have it, if you want to watch it in your spare time and you can't join us in another few minutes for that. Um, the same with the opening and welcome, as well as the plenary sessions, all these will be available uh, for everyone uh, to view. Um, I feel like I've talked a little quickly and uh, maybe there might be some more questions. So what I might do is just open it up now um, and uh, 
see if anyone has any questions. Go ahead, Rosalie. Um, so what you were just saying, all the all the things where we could view all the next upcoming things. Yes. <laughs> are those are those all online like Zoom things or is it recording of the live so action it's, in real? It's only it, it's only live on Zoom if it says in the de, in the description. Uh, um, sorry, I'll go back to sharing my screen. I don't know why I stopped. Um, so you can see here. It says Zoom link available in the session description, Zoom link available in the session description. And then here, where's another one? Uh, talking circle. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to be able to see it. Like live on, uh, th that should say Zoom link available in the session description. I'll change that right after this. Um, but unless uh, it says Zoom link is available, then this one will be recorded and uploaded within minutes after the session um, and available for you to watch and comment in the discussion board. Okay, thank you. Gregorio, did you have a question? Oh, yes. Um, my question is, are we still in, in time to upload a digital media? Yes, you can upload one. Um, have you uploaded anything or, yet? Uh, only a PDF. Okay, so if you've already uploaded something and it's been uh, accepted already, then the portal closes. So you need to send me an email. Uh, I put my email in the chat so that I can open the portal for you again. Okay, thank you. No worries. <laughs> I'll do it right after this. Just send me a message so that I don't forget as soon as I leave. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? Janine, you're on mute, just so you know. Um, you, um, I saw your email uh, and I tried to write it down, but uh, it went by so quickly. So can you put it in chat or something, an email where we can get in touch with you? Yep, I'll put it in right now. It's just my first name, Tamsin, T-A-M-S-Y-N, at cgnetworks.org. It's just it's a hard first, it's a difficult first name to remember. That's the problem, I think. Um, uh, and so, yeah, just feel free at any time to send me a message, even if it's something like I need my password reset. We can do that. It takes a couple of minutes. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? So one thing I'm going to do now is I am going to put the link in the chat uh, for the next session, which is a workshop session. Um, if I can find the chat now. Uh, so if you'd like to join that, uh, the, the name of the online workshop is called Seeing is Believing, the Increasing Impetus for visual literacy in the digital revolution. Um, I will, uh, it will be there in that, the link for that in the chat. Um, please uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any trouble uploading your digital media, let me know. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all online over the next couple of days and a great conference. So with that, I might just see you later. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Bye, everyone.